Hi, my name is Darren Joseph from HG.Tax. We're the team that seeks to demystify the sometimes confusing world of international tax. So today we're going to talk about U.S.-Spain tax issues. And to guide us along this interesting road, we have Ricky. Ricky, please introduce yourself. Well, my name is Ricky Gutierrez. I'm a, a tax advisor at Gutierrez Pujas and Barners. It's a tax firm located in, in Barcelona, Spain. Mm -hmm. I have international experience for almost 20 years. I'm here to try to answer the most of the questions you guys, you guys have in terms of uh, international tax and taxes between us and spain and well i'm just here to help you in anything you guys need fantastic u.s citizen who just got residency last year in spain but they're saying that they only stayed for a few months in 2023 and they had no income in spain is there requirements still to file a spanish tax return for 2023 here we would need to check if you actually qualify to be a Spanish tax resident or not. Yeah. In the case that you actually did qualify as Spanish tax resident, you are taxed on worldwide income. So it doesn't matter if you didn't generate anything in Spain. If you are a Spanish tax resident, you pay on your worldwide income. So if you obtain yeah. income outside of Spain, you also need to declare those in, in the Spanish income tax. But first, we need to determine if you qualify as a Spanish tax resident or not. And it's also worth mentioning that most of the conversations and most of the narrative around tax residency in Spain is around the 183-day rule. But there's also a center of life or center of vital interest or a place of habitual abode test. You want, you want to comment on that? Yeah. So basically, in terms of determining if you are a tax resident or not, there are three rules. The first one is the substantial person test, which is if you spend more than 183 days in Spain, then you are considered Spanish tax resident. And the second rule is the center of economic interest. So if your primary professional activities are conducted in Spain, and also if you are self-employed or otherwise, if everything is conducted in Spain, then you can also be considered Spanish tax resident. And the third rule is the assumption test. If your main interest, let's say your wife and kids are living here in Spain, they go to school here in Spain, the Spanish tax authorities could also claim that because of these things, you could be a Spanish tax resident. Basically, it's these three rules. Right. So in other words, depending on your circumstances, you can arrive, let's say, in August, September, October 2023, and still trigger tax residence, even though you didn't do the full 183 days. And Spain doesn't have like split year tax treatment like Portugal or the UK. And therefore, you can potentially be exposed for the entire calendar year to Spain taxes, in theory. Yes, that's a hundred percent. But one thing we normally mention whenever you go into Spain, we are able to justify that you were here less than 183 days. Normally we like to justify that you are not tax resident. If you are able to provide a tax return from and also a tax residency certificate from, from the foreign country, then mm -hmm. that will help and justify to the mm -hmm. Spanish tax authorities that at least for that year, you, you weren't Spanish tax resident. But that's a service that we also provide, as with any inter U.S. international tax practitioner, getting that residency certificate, which the Spanish tax office might want to see.